So we all know Notchiva are the daddy when it comes to air cooling, but now they've taken it one step further. They've gone passive, and frankly, they've gone massive. Let's do this. I'm so sick and tired of just boring cases. They just all look the same. Why can't anyone do anything different anymore? That's where you're wrong, little buddy. The Dark Cube case from Antec really breaks the mold, showcasing all your high-end components in style and with the ability to increase airflow with the interchangeable front panel. It really does give you the freedom to make your PC stand out from the crowd while keeping things nice and small. Whoever said that having a small package can't be powerful? Click the link in the description to find out more. I've been using Notchua coolers for pretty much as long as I can remember, simply because well, they're the best. Yes, you could argue that an AIO is better in some circumstances, but if you're either, I don't know, afraid to go with an AIO because you think electronics and water shouldn't really mix, or you just like the way that an air cooler looks or performs, then there really isn't anyone who comes close to kind of that in terms of performance, build quality, and overall price. I also get it that some people don't like the way Notua have historically had kind of beige and brown branding, but recently that's all changed with their Chromax lineup, and by giving people, I don't know, just a bit more choice. Well, after many years of development, they've come up with this, the NHP1, a fully passive or fanless cooler that's aimed at using it with kind of a variety of processors, including high-end ones. I mean, again, if anyone was gonna do something as crazy as this, it would have to be Notua, right? Unlike other passive coolers on the market from other brands, the P1 has actually been designed from the ground up with kind of passive cooling in mind. They've not taken like an existing design and simply removed the fan. They've built it with thicker thins to help take the heat. And they've also developed it with wider spacing in mind for the least amount of resistance of airflow from case fans. Now, one cool thing I love about Notcher is that they kind of think about their execution. They look at motherboards, graphics cards, memory, and how they will be affected by the orientation of your CPU cooler. And the P1, well, is no different. With the way that it's actually designed and the way it sits towards the top part of your motherboard, you won't have any issues with GPU clearance, even on the latest motherboards that typically have the X16 slot first. You may actually remember that older motherboards normally had an X1 slot first, followed by the first X16 slot, and well, just kind of making things a little bit easier with clearances. Not with this bad boy. The same can also be said about memory, and again, they thought of that too, with easy access to your memory slots. They do make it clear that on boards with memory on the left side of the socket, like LGA 2066, you shouldn't be using memory modules that exceed 45 millimeters in height. It's just purely because this is the room that you're actually gonna have. So what about the cooler itself? I mean, pictures don't really do the size of it any justice. Even here, you probably can't really get a sense of the scale. So just for you guys, here is the eTechnics toolkit for a reasonable scale. And if you don't have one, you can pick one up on store.etechnics.com. So you can see exactly how it compares. Shameless plug, I know, but we've got bills to pay. Seriously though, here it is next to the D15S of which I'm hoping most of you know kind of just how big this bad boy is. So with the cooler, the first thing that you're gonna notice is the sheer quality. I mean, it is like industrial grade. Any air cooler, even ones from Notua with fins on can easily be bent out of shape by accident. This, I mean, it, it just can't. I mean, I'm not the strongest guy in the world, but you'd be hard pressed to bend these out of shape without actually using tools. So there's six heat pipes in total that all connect into the base plate and they stem through the 13 thins. Why 13 you ask? Well, why not 12? Why not 14? Well, I'm no thermal engineer, but I'm sure Notchua knows what they're doing. So maybe, just maybe 13 is the magic number or maybe they just felt like using 13. I guess we'll never know. So I can hear you all shouting at the screen asking if it'll work with your CPU. Luckily, Notchua have actually thought of that too. They have a CPU compatibility center where you can see exactly how it will handle your CPU with and without their new NF-A12X25 LSPWM fans installed on there. So they put each rating into a category to show you how your cooler will actually handle your CPU in terms of stock base clock, turbo overclocking, or if it's just incompatible in general. Now, when it comes to mounting, things are basically the same as what we've kind of come to love. So whether you're on AMD or Intel, you're gonna find it a bit of, well, it's gonna be a breeze. There are other brands on the market who, I'm gonna be honest, they need to take note about mounting air coolers. And while I get it as, I guess most consumers will never need to mount their cooler more than once, 
we here as <clears throat> professionals are constantly taking our coolers on and off when we do CPU testing, for instance. Now, one thing that I do want to mention, one thing where kind of things have changed is the screwdriver. It's an actual screwdriver with an actual handle and it's brown. I mean, I personally wouldn't use it over the handy dandy e Technics one because I mean, come on, who would? But it's a nice little thing to have. It's also got a Torx head on it now, which I can only assume is because it has six points of contact opposed to four like you'd get on a Phillips or a Posi drive. Either way, I'm kind of feeling the screwdriver. And yes, I'm getting excited over a screwdriver. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a passive cooler. Don't forget that. But Notchwood do give you options. Inside are two clips to install a fan like this, and there's three places to install them in total. And for ease of use, they've denoted them with hole set one, two, or three markings. So with this in mind, I actually reached out to Notchua in regards to fitting multiple fans and potentially seeing how things would be in a push-pull configuration. And I was told that due to the low resistance, due to the larger fin spacing, it just doesn't make sense. They told us that if you wanted to run a bunch of fans, then this isn't the right cooler for you. So on to the all important thing, how does it perform in passive mode, but also with a single fan? Well, there's only one way to find out, but before we do, I wanna stress one big thing, and that is the fact that we're gonna be running this on an open air test bench. Now with anything passive, it would benefit more from being in a case with added airflow from case fans that would flow across the actual cooler. We're also testing with a 5900X to show a, let's call it a worst case scenario. I mean, I wouldn't honestly expect many people to run something quite like this in quite this way, though Notchua themselves have actually run the P1 in their fanless demo system on an 11900K, which is 125 watt part. And according to the compatibility list, it should allow for low turbo or give low overclocking headroom with the fan. It does say though that when using fanless, the CPU might fall slightly below the base clock under continuous load. So definitely keep that in mind and obviously check the compatibility list against your own CPU. So as I said, we wanted to take it a little further and put Notchua on kind of, you know, on the back foot. So we paired it with the AMD Ryzen 9 5900X, which is actually a 105 watt part. But again, referring to their compatibility center, it actually shows worse results than the 11900K, even with the fan installed. I guess all those cores and threads really do make a difference, even if the TDP of the chip is actually lower. Either way, I'm expecting good things. Now, another thing we also wanted to be a bit more sensible because we can't do stupid things here all the time. So we paired things up with an Intel 11400F, which I still believe is kind of Intel's unsung hero of the 11th gen processors. I mean, it's a 65 watt part and not to claims for it to be compatible in fanless mode and to give low turbo or overclocking headroom when paired with the fan. So with that in mind, let's take a look at them glorious benchmarks. So before I dissect the results, I want to take a moment to explain that this is a passive cooler and I never went into this thinking that it would beat the D15S or even come close to it. I mean, come on, it's highly regarded as one of, if not the best air coolers on the market. The results though, well, they were actually quite surprising. So on our 5900X, we saw it sat idle at 40 degrees while we saw it jump to 86 degrees during Far Cry New Dawn at 1080p on high settings. Add in one of the LSPWM fans to the top of the cooler, blowing it kind of, you know, through, saw the idle drop to 34 degrees and the load again in Far Cry New Dawn to 79. Comparing this to the D15S, there was only a one degree difference between having a fan and seven degrees when comparing the P1 in passive mode. The D15S did see slightly better results at load at 71 degrees, but again, I mean, it was kind of expected, right? 
When looking at the 11400F, idle on the P1 in passive mode was 35 degrees, whereas with a fan it saw a slightly better result at 31 degrees. At load, it was 70 on passive and came down to 58 while running Cinebench R15 Multi, again with a fan on top blowing down. Now at the time of filming, Notchura have said the P1 is actually available to buy for $109.90, while the new NFA12 X25 LS PWM fans come in at about $29.90. In the UK, Quiet PC has both items in stock with the P1 at £99.98p and the fan at £26.50. They have also said that they will be available through the usual retail partners, including Amazon, as soon as possible. So, looking at the cooler, one thing that does make me chuckle a little is the P1 comes with a six year warranty. I mean, why? <laughs> what could really go wrong with a huge chunk of metal? Not much, in all honesty. And I guess another thing that is worth bearing in mind while we're talking about the cooler in general is the height. The cooler itself is 158 millimeters high. And once you add a fan on, which is 25 millimeters, brings it up to 183 millimeters total. Obviously, if you wanna mount the fan on the side, either side, it makes things a little better, but just be cautious when looking at having this cooler in your case and kind of what extra space the fan may actually take up if you're gonna use it with a fan. In terms of the other mounting locations, again, I'd kind of advise caution as a mid tower likely won't allow you to put it facing upwards and acting as a kind of exhaust due to space constraints and depending on your motherboard and graphics card, fitting one in between the cooler and the GPU may make things just a bit too tight that you're, I don't know, you're going to be starving the fan of pretty much any airflow. So I guess the all important question, have not you pulled it off? In a simple answer, yes. In a more complicated one, kind of. I mean, they set out to develop an air cooler that can harness the airflow from the rest of your system while remaining 100% silent, unless you want to add a single fan to it, of course. Yes, it's a little bit more expensive than the D15S, but there is more material to it, so that's kind of expected. And even on our worst case testing of a 5900X, which Notchua claimed it couldn't handle, we still saw frequent boosting and temperatures in line with safe limits. Adding a fan definitely helps to bring that temperature down to something I guess more in line with a D15S, but an egg at an extra cost. So yeah, mm, tricky one, right? Obviously it is worth noting that under constant full load, you could see clock speeds potentially suffer and boosting not happening as frequently due to the temperatures. But again, variables of cases, airflow, and all that stuff will come into play. So speaking of variables, when it comes to testing a product like this, there are so many variables at play with let's say cases, the amount of fans, the orientation of the fans and so forth. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that each installation will differ, but I just wanted to show you guys that, I don't know, a kind of decent comparison between the best selling product and what we now have on the market. Obviously they're aimed at very, very different markets and very different types of users, but still fun to do. So I do kind of feel that adding the fan is kind of redundant as you would likely be better just buying a D15S. And I also think that with the size of the cooler, it's a tough one to match up. I mean, would you honestly put this into a mid tower system with lower end parts? Probably not. But then if you had something bigger with higher end parts, would you buy this and run it passively or simply buy something else like a D15S? Let me know what you guys think. Even if this isn't the best thing on the market, do passive coolers have a place? And where do you draw the line when a cooler like this one, the NHP one, could potentially be more expensive than the chip you're actually trying to call. I guess if you was looking at some form of like media PC with a Ryzen 3200G and having a nearly silent system, only you can answer if you think the cost of the cooler being more expensive than the CPU is kind of worth the benefits of having a completely silent build. Though at the moment, CPU prices are still all over the place. So again, something else to take into consideration. Oh, I don't know. Either way, I'm interested to see what you guys and girls think, so let me know in the comments section below. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, you know exactly what to do, and I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.